Does life ever feel like it's a bit much? Like, you would like to slow down, but things are just really busy and really overwhelming. And you kind of know that all these edited photos of perfectly brewed mugs of coffee in very aesthetically pleasing mugs are not actually real life. And that simple soul living is a lot harder than it looks. My name is Kat, welcome to episode 2 of the Slow Living Guide where I give you the A to Z on slow living and hopefully provide a pocket of calm in your day. In episode 1 I chatted about the origins of slow living and how it links with simple living. I'll leave a link for you to check out at the end of the video. This week I'm discussing the pros and cons of the slow living lifestyle so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss the rest of the series. Let's start with a con. Slow living is simple but it isn't easy, at least not to begin with. It takes a daily practice to slow down and it can often feel like an uphill battle against the modern world. You may remember a few seconds ago I asked you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the rest of the series. This could be considered as a form of using the fear of missing out to get you to subscribe. And this is exactly what the industry does to get us to buy things we don't need and do things that won't bring us lasting joy. Now, there is nothing wrong with marketing techniques if the item being advertised is one that will genuinely benefit you, such as this series, as this is a win-win for both the consumer and the industry. The important thing is to slow down before acting so that you can be aware of when it's happening and make a choice out of a rational decision rather than out of compulsion. The thing about this practice of slowing, however, is that the positive results can be, well, slow in emerging. Willpower is enough to get started, but it's daily habits and systems that keep it going. Slow living isn't a quick fix for our fast-paced lives. Rather, it's a way of taking daily practices of slowing down and choosing not to get sucked into the noise. On the flip side, slow living practices feed into themselves. The more you slow down, the more natural it feels until slow living practices start to disperse into all the other areas of your life. For example, if you cultivate the habit of only checking your social media at set times during the day for limited time periods, you strengthen your muscles of self-discipline which may then make it easier for you to stay focused on work tasks. Another potential con, although one with a silver lining, is that slowing down forces us to take a look at ourselves and that can be really hard. When we rush through our to-do lists and keep ourselves busy with events, it's easy to keep shoving down parts of ourselves that we would rather not face, as a kind of repression. Suppression, of course, is a healthy practice of putting issues temporarily in a box on a shelf to deal with later in a safer place. Repression, however, is the act of continually shoving things into a box on a shelf until it overflows and inevitably falls on our heads. When we start saying no to busyness and taking up space to be alone with ourselves, difficult emotions can come up. Unresolved grief, ignored fears, unfulfilled dreams. The fact that none of us are quite as perfect and together as we like to portray on social media. Many of us don't even realise the extent of the pain that we carry buried deep down. I know I certainly didn't until I slowed down. But we have a choice here. Either we can run away back into our busy, numbing lives or we can choose to slow down and face these issues and be healed. 
This brings us on to our next pro. Since I started slowing down and cultivating slow living practices such as meditation and journaling and taking time for myself, I found a massive decrease in my anxiety levels. For myself, much of my healing has come through a combination of prayer, therapy, community and creative practices. None of this would have been possible if I had continued to rush about prioritising my workload over my soul. Slowing down can also give a clearer perspective on life, which leads to wiser decision making and an overall calmer sense of presence in the everyday. Adopting a slower lifestyle can feel overwhelming at times, especially if it's very different to the way that you're used to living. As with any lifestyle change, it can be really difficult to rewire the mind and start thinking in a different way. And when we inevitably fail, as we do as human beings at anything we start doing for the first time, it can sometimes become an extra thing for the inner critic to jump on our backs about. There's a story where Jesus and his followers are walking through a field and a bunch of religious leaders start criticising his friends because they're picking grain to eat on the Sabbath, the day of rest, an action which the religious leaders consider to be work and therefore unlawful. Now, Jesus' response is this, Sabbath is made for people, not people for the Sabbath. In the same way, the concept of slow living was designed for people, not just to become another item on the to-do list or another lifestyle goal to reach. If we start out by setting the bar too high or placing unfair expectations on ourselves, we may end up feeling more disheartened than when we began. If, however, we accept that the process of transitioning to a slower lifestyle takes time and patience, we can end up having a calmer sense of self-acceptance and gratitude for how far we've come in the little ways. If it's getting a little bit blue here, it's because it's getting dark in Scotland because it gets dark very, very early here and I'm very limited in the light that I have and it's also very stormy and raining. Okay, let's get back into the calmer side of the video. The other thing that you may find is that slow living results in increased levels of productivity and efficiency because you're working from a place of rest. This might seem a bit counterintuitive, but hear me out. Often we feel like working longer hours means that we'll get more done because more hours equals more time in which to do the work, right? It sounds logical, but studies have actually shown that when we go above a certain number of hours of work in a week, productivity levels actually go down. In one particular study, it was demonstrated that productivity levels are capped at about 55 hours per week. Amongst participants, there was little difference between the amount of work they completed in 55 hours versus 70 hours in a week. If you think of the body like a car, this makes a lot of sense. It isn't logical to expect a car to keep on running when its fuel tank is empty. So it doesn't really make sense to expect it of ourselves, especially when we are so much more valuable than the vehicles we drive. Even Albert Einstein invested his time in what could be described as slow living practices. When his work started to feel too much, he would step away and relax by listening to some classical music or going for a walk to clear his head. If it's good enough for Albert Einstein, it's good enough for me. I'd love to know what you do to unwind when life is getting a bit much. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, remember to like the video, share it with a friend who you think might benefit from the message. I don't think it's talked about enough. And also, if you haven't already and you've made it to this point, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell and you will get updated on next week's episode. I will be talking about slow food, so do come and join me for a bite. Until next time, it was lovely to have you here.